Hey gang, this is Larry Williams. This is being recorded June 24th, 2023. Kind of maybe the first edition of our focus on stocks. We had hoped to get something going with stockcharts.com, but there's been some delay there. So we're going to do it directly and uh, at least get this uh, kicked off. Okay, I'm going to start with a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The red line is the short-term uh, cyclical pattern that's been the most dominant. As you can see, what it suggests would come down, immediately bounce a little bit, but it looks like the next really good buy point comes around in the first week of August. Notice how strong that cycle has been recently. That's been when all the really good market rallies have uh, taken place. So for those who are looking for the next really excellent buy point in the market, well, I think that's where it's going to come. On a longer-term basis, that's the blue line, which suggests uh, we're going to continue rallying here. In fact, uh, it should continue up to the end of the year, but you can see there's no bear market in sight. Next, I'd like to look at a really strong trade that's coming up uh, almost right here, right now, in the stock market itself. The blue line you see is the seasonal pattern of the S&P minis. Uh, notice that we're looking at the June, July, this is where July starts. If we were to buy on the first trading day of the month, as you can see, at least in 2021, there was a nice rally there. So there's been a strong seasonal pattern for prices to rally just starting around the end of June, the 1st of July. How strong is that? Let me show you more. Here was a seasonal pattern in 2020. Again, you see the first trading day of the month and what happened. Now, the actual low came a little bit earlier, but you can see that seasonal forecast has been really strong this time of the year, starting the end of June, 1st of July, for a market to rally. There are, of course, no perfect trades. Here's a good example of when we saw the market rally. Here's a seasonal pattern. We should start to rally around the 1st of July. There's a buying on the 1st of July. Ultimately, there was a rally, but prices went down first. So uh, this is a seasonal pattern. There's no guarantee to success in the market, but certainly we know there's a strong bias at this time of the year. How strong of a bias? Let's look. Here it is. This is the seasonal pattern coming up. We're still back here. We haven't gotten into that sweet spot yet. But there's the first trading day of July, and that's when the rally should begin. So clearly, there's a trading opportunity here. How can we take advantage of that? I'll show you. Here we are looking at if you had bought the S&Ps on the first trading day of July and held for nine days and then exit on the first profitable opening, uh, in the last 24 years, 79% of the time that trade has been correct. If you want a higher percentage of winners, well, if you exit after being in the trade just one day, you have 87% winners, but you don't make nearly as much money, $11,000 versus $29,000. But we can see clearly buying the first trading day of July, the longer you hold the point, you start to make a lot more money. Then it deteriorates starting around trading day, 9, 10, 11. So it looks like we have a good trade coming up here. Usually that trade lasts, as we can see, eight to nine days if we're buying going along on the first trading days in July. You might be able to get in a little bit better on your own. You see where the seasonal sweet spot is as well. But in any event, guys and gals, we got a great trade coming up, short-term trade in the S&Ps. Now I'd like to focus on some individual stocks. We are looking at AMD here. Advanced Micro Devices, a uh, pretty interesting stock. It's had a good rally recently. We look at our accumulation technique. It's been very good with that. Higher high-end prices, divergence from accumulation. The market comes down. Nice accumulation at virtually all of these buy points. And currently, we've seen buying have come into this market. Notice in the past, when that's happened, we've also seen rallies in price. It looks like, to me, we could pull back to about the uh, $100 uh, share target area. And that would represent a really interesting point to go long because of the longer term cyclical forecast says just about right here, right now, we should rally. These are any mere term swings in the market. And it's been pretty good at calling and telling us in advance. So we see a nice buy point coming up around the 1st of July. And again, it looks like around the latter part of November. So we have a strong cyclical point coming up and it's supported by the current technical position in the market. So there's one stock for us to look at. Now, let's look at another. Here's the stock everybody wished they owned. 
problem though. We had a big gap up here back here and we have seen buyers come into the market, push the market higher. That's been a really good indicator of when we can expect higher prices. And now look what's happened. We've actually seen professional selling come into this market. I suspect this gap is going to be a real magnet to see prices come back into this gap. We've also seen some divergence in here. Clearly, we haven't seen a lot of professional buying recently. So let's take a look to see what cycles are telling us. Cycles are a bit mixed here. They suggest we can still rally, but there's a stronger intermediate term point in the market coming up in a month or so over here. So it looks to me like that's a mixed bag. My interest would be seeing if we get back into that gap area. Until then, I think we're probably a little more overbought than we are oversold. So um, to me, this is a market to be on the sidelines. Here is the all-time favorite stock, Apple. Cyclical in terms of seasons as well. Right now, this is the seasonal time we should start to go up. We have seen buying coming into this market. Little problem. We're looking at on balance volume. Notice we've seen a higher price movement, but we've seen some divergence between accumulation of the market and price. That's not healthy. So let's turn our attention to the cyclical aspect of Apple. Oh, now things start to get really interesting. Apple's had a pretty good buy point. You can see about every four months, another buy point, another buy point. That's coming up in August, the latter part of July, first part of August. Right now, what cycles are suggesting is we uh, go back and forth, come down. Remember, cycles don't tell us the magnitude of the move. Just we should start to see a rally at this point, a decline at this point. So we're in the area where we would expect declines. So let's keep our powder dry until we get into later July, at which point I would expect Apple to rally. And now let's talk about the stock everybody's talking about, Tesla. Cycles have been pretty effective in this market. Again, keep in mind, cyclical lows just suggest we should rally at that time, rally at this time, rally here, rally over here. Oh, and we're coming up into a rally phase now. So I would expect a decline, a pullback into this area, and then see higher prices. That's typically what's happened at these cyclical lows in Tesla. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the shorter term on a technical basis in our next chart. Tesla's been a bit of a mixed bag technically. It is following a seasonal pattern, which has been to rally. It's done that right well. You probably remember, or many of you saw in the Mad Money Show with Jim Cramer, we recommend the stock back here. It's had a huge move in the market. But now the seasonal pattern really is sideways more than straight up. We've seen some selling coming in this market. You usually want to we see an index high of professional accumulation. We see rallies. We're not seeing that now. So I suspect we're going to see this market back and fill until we get into that cyclical low that I just showed you. Well, there it is. We've wrapped up a projection of the stock market and also the major stocks in the market. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do more of this. We'll see what happens with uh, Larry Williams' focus on stocks. But this is it, the first edition. Oh, and by the way... Don't email me with questions about any of this. You're not paying for this. This is free to you. I'm not going to reply to anybody's questions about any stocks. I just can't. We get so many emails as is. So uh, please, please don't ask any questions about this. I know no more than what I've just shown you here, okay? So I'll go with that. I hope we now have a view and a roadmap to the future. Until next time, this is Larry Williams wishing you good luck and good trading.